Can I get our supervisors to please be seated and sign in? I'll move this closer, see if we can pick it up. Is that picking it up? I can hear it here. Those speakers are off. Are they on? Yes. We're on up here. We're not on down there. You're not on. You're not on. I'm, it's on here. But I can hear it. Test, test. I can hear you. I'm good. And you can't hear that. Uh, do we have anybody from maintenance here? Okay, I'll give them a call. Okay, I will do, I will speak as loud as I can until we get maintenance up here to take care of this issue with the microphones. Uh, it is 9.30, we will call the June meeting of the Wood County Board of Supervisors to order, and we are going to start today's meeting uh, with the invocation by former County Board Chairman Laverne Rigel, uh, our current chaplain, uh, Vice Chair Miner, decided that it would be a nice gesture to go out and find some of those people who have performed this task admirably in the past. So uh, today we invited past Chairman Rigel. Uh, some of us had the privilege to serve with Chairman Rigel um, for a number of years. Um, had served from 92 to 2008, from 1992 to 2008. He chaired the General Claims and Judiciary Committee at one time, the Sheriff and Traffic Committee, Emergency Management, and he served as the County Board Chairman from 2002 to 2004. And I guess to sum it up, I can say that in the time that I was privileged to serve with him, he always served with distinction, with dignity, and with honor. And I think the one thing that any of us would say about Laverne Rigel was he was always a gentleman. So Laverne, if I could ask you to please come forward and lead us in the invocation today. As Chairman Wright comes forward, I'd ask the body to please rise, and then after the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The microphone is yours, sir. Thank you. Shall we stop and pray? Dear Lord, as we stand before you at this time, we give you thanks for all the board members that came together as a unit of government to carry out the business of this day for Wood County. We ask for wisdom for the board members as they make decisions on behalf of the people they represent in the various districts. Keep each one, may each one be cognizant of the views of others and try to work together with the issues that are presented them to this day. We thank you for America. We thank you for the flag that is a symbol of our country and freedom. And we can pledge allegiance to the flag without fear, but with honor. These things we ask in the name of our Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And thank you very much, Chairman Wright. We appreciate your coming up today. By the way, he told me it took him a little while to get here, and Sheriff, he was driving about 85 miles an hour, he said, I'm going to run out of time, so give him a pass on that, if you will. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And to make sure my cell phone was off. Can you hear that back there yet, or do I? It's better. It's better? Okay. That takes us to the minutes of the previous meeting. I would need a motion to approve. I have a motion by Hamilton, second by Bry. Any discussion? All in favor of approval, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. Um, excusals today, we have two, Supervisor Fire, Supervisor Al Warden. We have no resignations. We have no appointments. We have no reappointments. Do we have any public comment today? There, we do have some public comments. Sir, if you'd like to go up to the microphone, uh, please give your name, and then we allow two minutes to address the board on any of the subjects that will or might come before the board. My name is Warren Rockman. I'm a property owner, a uh, farm owner in the town of Cranmore and the town of Seneca. I'm just here to talk about the uh, borrowing for road projects. I think it's a mistake. Uh, you cannot run a household, a business, a county, 
by borrowing your way out of a problem. Um, there has to be another way that the money can be generated, either through a segregated account that over time you put money in to use for the road projects, uh, make the scope of the project smaller so that you can pay as you go. Um, we didn't get into this problem overnight. Everyone knows that the roads are slowly deteriorating. I think that this needs to be planned for sooner so we're not in this position right now. So I'm against borrowing money uh, on the backs of the taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Okay, that takes us to acknowledgments and recognitions. And we have a number of those today. Uh, today is one of those times when we get to recognize and honor those long-term employees. Uh, we are certainly an HR-centric organization. Um, our personnel are what make us strong. And at this time, I would call on we have a number of department heads here to make those presentations. If I could bring up Brock Larson. Brock, I think we're going to start with you with the Veterans Service Office. And behind Brock on deck will be Doug Pazino, the Highway Commissioner. And those should be in order. Mine is. Good morning. Uh, I'm here to honor Teresa Harches, who's Completed 25 years with Wood County, all of it in the Veterans Service Office. Uh, her, uh, for the past 11 and a half years, I've, I've had the pleasure of her trying to make me look good, and she succeeded. <coughs> uh, and she helped train me because I came in, I didn't know anything. I could spell veteran; that was about it. So, uh, but it says a lot for our department. We've had four retire, four people leave our department. They've all been retirees in the past 11 years. Uh, it's a great place to work. Every day is, every phone call is a different uh, challenge. So, uh, thank you, Truth. Mm -hmm. um, just to say, um, I feel lucky to have a job that is um, interesting and challenging, and uh, occasionally very rewarding. And um, it's really amazing the work that we do and truly how it changes veterans lives and their families um, what we can do for them it's, it's unbelievable so it's been very rewarding work and i'm lucky to have it so thank you thank you we have highway commissioner doug pezzano And Doug will be followed by Human Services Director Kathy Ratter. I, I, I really don't know where 25 years went. I, I worked the first day with Lynn. She was she come to us as a summer health person, and she's worked her way up, uh, uh, truck driver, hot waste <coughs> plant operator, uh, uh, lead person, all of that. One thing about Lynn, she's really a competitive person, and when she gets when she starts a job, she's going to make it better for Wood County. I, I know that for a fact, so thank you very much for 25 years. I'll get you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to see you. I just want to say thank you to Wood County for my job for 25 years, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with Doug as a co-worker and having him as a boss. And um, I got a new fight on my hands right now, not just working with all the men that I normally would. <laughs> um, I'm battling breast cancer right now, but so far it's going really good. Um, Second uh, chemo treatment is this Thursday, but um, I'm a fighter, and I think it's helped with working all these men with all these <laughs> <laughs> This is Kathy Redder, our Human Services Director. Good morning. I have three employees that are not able to be here today, but I do want to recognize them. Kathy Willems, who works in our uh, Marshfield City Hall Plaza as an economic support worker, is being recognized for 25 years of service. Um, Pamela Doherty is also being recognized for 30 years of service. She's an economic support worker, and she's in our Centralia office. And last, I have a longer-term employee, Carrie Meyer, who is a medical transcriptionist over on 12th Street. 
She's being recognized for 35 years. Thank you for the honor of recognizing them. We have three department heads because of other obligations couldn't be here today. We'll recognize those employees next month, but at this time, uh, Vice Chairman of the Board, Trent Minor, has a few recognitions, starting with the HR department. Yeah, if I could have Paula Tracy come forward, please. <clears throat> Paula actually is, is celebrating her 25 years with Wood County. She started in the child support uh, department back in March of 1989. And two months later, she jumped to the Corporation Counsel's Office. But it was in January of 1990 that she made the switch to the what was then known as the Personnel Department. We now call it the Human Resources Department. And she's been there ever since. <clears throat> During that time in office, she's been through five different directors. I think we're moving in on our number six, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, and she's been interim director at least twice during those transitions, including now. We are now moving on to a director number six, as I mentioned. The one constant has been Paula's professionalism and her dedication to her job and to the employees she interacts with. During this current transition, we've had the opportunity to work closer than we have had previously, and I've come to see the respect, to see and respect the calming influence between the people versus policy issues that can sometimes be very contentious. So Paula, thank you very much for your 25 years. Well, the 25 years just seem to fly. When you come to work and you really enjoy your job, you enjoy the people you work with and those that you serve, it just is just a joy. So thank you. Appreciate it. Then if I could have Chairman Rigel come forward as well for this next presentation. And I'm going to ask our county clerk, Cindy Sepris, to come down. From the bridge, please. I'm getting evil eyes. You know, you know why I'm having Tony stand right next to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you kind of funny too because she runs everything up here. Don't touch anything, Lance. <laughs> it's the way it works. <laughs> Cindy actually also started out in the child support de uh, department back in February of 1989, February of 1989, excuse me, and moved to the clerk of court's office in 1996, and then moved to the Register of Deeds office, the Branch 1 office, and then the county clerk, Tony Roosh, had the God-given good sense to appoint you deputy county clerk, thank God. Try <laughs> This, uh, and then when Tony retired in March of 2002, Cindy was appointed by um, the county board chair at the time, which was Bill Goodness, but uh, Mr. Rigel was shortly thereafter. He was the vice chair at the time. Um, this would have been right after the election of 2000, the election that changed forever how elections are conducted in this country. Through it all, Cindy has been a leader not only in Wood County, training all 34 municipal clerks in their respective election officials within our own borders, but also training clerks and election inspectors in other counties. As one who has served as a town clerk and still serves as a chief election inspector, I rest much easier the night before elections, knowing that she'll be in the office the next morning able to answer any questions and have the right answer immediately at her fingertips. As if this weren't a large enough job, she also keeps track of uh, us <laughs> and, the, and, and the chairman. And as Tony Riegel can say, that is no small task. I, I think Lance and him would both say that neither one of them have been successful in that, and they depend on Cindy very much. I've seen other county clerks and other county boards have a very contentious relationship, but because of Cindy's professionalism and good humor, that does not exist here in Wood County. So Cindy, on behalf of Chairman Riegel and myself, thank you for 25 years. You know, as I'm listening to him, I'm like, oh my gosh, where did all that time go? And you're, you know, you're thinking about all the days that you put in that turn into years. It's, it's amazing. Um, but I, I just want to say all these kind words are wonderful. But I, I just have always been proud to say that I work for Wood County. Thanks. I just want to say that I feel that this was really an honor for Cindy, and I know that the people who are here and the people who work with her know that she's a real help to everyone, and we really are pleased and happy to have her 
in her position that she's in. I think every one of us had gone to her at one time or another and asked questions. And I was no exception. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know, she's taken on the added responsibility of the Wisconsin County Clerks Association, I think that's what they're called, or something close. Uh, that conference begins this Sunday in Wisconsin Rapids. So all of the county clerks from around the states are here in the cities hosting that event. Yeah, so look out. It's too late. Look out. We're all, we're all going to be here. Uh, then after that, so at that conference too, I'm going to be installed as an officer too. So. Sheriff, you might want to put on some extra patrol. I, I've seen these people at conferences. They're a trouble-causing group. So, all right, we'll continue with the long-term recognitions if we could. Uh, Norwood is next. Rhonda Kozik is here. Rhonda, if you would come forward. And then you'll be followed by Amy Slatter. I'm here today to recognize two employees. First, Sue Snornheim has been here or worked at Norwood for 30 years. Sue started in the medical records department in January, January 1st of 1992. Um, during that time, she has been a word processor and has remained a word processor. She does a fantastic job. She has a very upbeat, pleasant personality. She works the reception desk sometimes. Very nice to all the customers that we have come through. Um, over the years, Sue started out at a 100% position, and as she had a family, kind of changed to a 50%, 85%, and is now back to a 100% position. So we will be recognizing Sue and Sandy at a um, recognition at the facility where we'll have cake for both of them. So. Next is Sandy Wolniak. Sandy works in our dietary department. She has worked there since 1974. Um, she has been a medical assi or a, an assistant, dietary assistant, as well as cooked for a few years. She is looking forward to um, three months from yesterday when she has her birthday and will be retiring from Wood So um, she and her husband recently built a cabin near Rome, and she's looking forward to retiring down there. Um, one of the interesting things Sandy just told me is that she actually started at Norwood in high school at the age of 15 under a different program and then was hired after that. So she's actually worked there for 39 years. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, it's been very enjoyable. But um, Norwood, I think of the residents because you know what? They have to stay there and we get to punch out at eight hour shift or whatever but you know what there's a lot of families there that really love them and i hope that keeps on and thank you very much i do appreciate this i love it <laughs> amy slattery is the administrator at edgewater i believe you have one award today I'm accepting this award for Cindy Schneider. She was a CNA or is a CNA at Edgewater Haven, and she's been there for over 30 years now. Um, Cindy was unable to make it here today, and she currently works on our Alzheimer's Dementia Behavior Wing and does a wonderful job with those residents. We will be presenting this to her at the recognition at Edgewater. Thank you so much. And our Parks Administrator, Chad Schooley. Looks like you have one of them up here, Chad. Good morning. Uh, this morning I'm accepting this 35-year service uh, plaque for Scott Fox. He's our elite maintenance worker out at Northwood County Park. Uh, Scott actually started his career um, during summer help uh, when he was in, in uh, high school out at Northwood County Park. He's had his whole 35 years out there. Um, does an excellent job. He also is in charge of managing and maintaining Powers Bluff County Park along with Northwood County Park or Richfield as some people know it. So um, I will present, present this award to him um, or his recognition plaque 
at our summer uh, employee meeting in July. So thank you. That wraps up our employee recognition today. Again, I just want to, on behalf of the whole board, say thank you. Obviously, we have a lot of long-term employees who are instrumental in the operation of this county. Thanks again. We have a couple of these that we will recognize next month because of the department head absence. We have no special orders of business today, so that takes us directly into the packet, which is page six. The start of the packet, page six. And I know we're working off iPads out there now. How's that working out so far? Pretty good? Get a couple in some. <laughs> right. Some thumbs up. Some thumbs up. <clears throat> All right, page six of the packet. Tuesday, June 3rd, the executive committee meeting. Any questions on six? Seven or eight? The executive committee meeting of Thursday, June 5th on page nine. Supervisor Miner. If I may, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. After that meeting, um, uh, we made a decision. We offered a, uh, a lady a position for HR director. I'm excited to announce she has accepted our offer. Um, her name is Connie Janowski. She is currently the HR director at AIG Travel Guard in Stevens Point. She will be starting with Wood County on July 14th. So you'll see her at the next county board meeting. It's only your second day, so be kind and be gentle. Don't scare her off right away. Um, but you'll see her next month. She has over 23 years of experience in HR, um, uh, well-versed in, in a lot of different HR aspects. Um, just a real nice, delightful person to talk to. Um, she's very excited. Uh, she wanted to make sure that everybody knew that she's very excited um, and anticipates about joining the HR department um, and her commitment to understanding, supporting, and fulfilling the needs of Wood County employees. So we're really excited um, by offering her the job and that she accepted. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that was page nine. Page 10 is the HR monthly letter of comments. 11, maintenance. Finance department on 12. The systems department on 13. 14. Safety and risk management, their letter of comments on page 15. Comments from the county clerk on page 16. Cindy, do you want to add anything to that conference you have coming up? No? Okay. okay. Brings us to page 17 in the packet, which is the first resolution for you today, and I'll ask the clerk to please read that resolution. This will be resolution 14-6-1. Uh, this is an init initial resolution authorizing the issuance of general obligation promissory notes. Fiscal note, not to exceed exceed four million eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars i have a motion by minor and a second by roser all right you've heard the reading of the resolution is there any discussion any discussion on the resolution? supervisor nelson this is the one on, on the, I, I can't get this darn pages don't <laughs> don't turn very easily but uh there thank you it takes a lady to get the things done i guess but anyways, uh, on this resolution, uh, uh, there again is, is I, I wonder, uh, with the, uh, I'm all for the program. I think it's a tremendous opportunity to get the work done that has to be done. But I'm just wondering, uh, the crew right now has seasonal work that has to be done. And then we're going into an expanded uh, road work program. And I'm wondering if it wouldn't be in the best interest to uh, uh, solicit bids to see if it would be done cheaper and, and then at the same time get the seasonal work done as well as this work. Further discussion? Supervisor Mahan. Sorry, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is kind of a, I know there's a lot of discussion going on behind the scenes on this one. And I will support this resolution um, somewhat reluctantly because I think there are some issues under the surface here that probably uh, deserve some attention. Uh, I realize that borrowing this money, and, and, and Trent and I talked before the meeting, and we're projecting that the possibility exists to go 10 years with the plan at $4 million a year. And that's a substantial amount of money. And personally, from my own point of view, I would like to see any kind of spending at that level go to a referendum, of course, we can cut it off at, at, at any year we 
want or maybe cause this year, maybe it ends. Uh, but I think what people need to understand is that what caused, what basically part of the problem is, is that when we lose revenues from the administration in, in Madison, uh, those services that people demand from at a county level still have to be paid for. And, and we take on the, the responsibility of that. And sometimes it's not easy to do and, and we have hard decisions to make. And I think that if you talk about economic development, you talk about infrastructure and road maintenance is part of that. And so I think that people need to decide do they want to have a county that sparkles, as Wood County has, or do we want it uh, to disintegrate by not taking care of things? It's a tough decision, it really is, but I will support it this year and ongoing probably too. Um, and I think that uh, people need to realize that it's not a, not a very easy decision to basically raise taxes. That's basically what we will be doing here in form. But uh, I will support it. Thank you. Supervisor Wagner, then I'll go to Supervisor Conrad. When this was explained to us, it was very clear that the minimum amount we had to look at borrowing was about 1.8 million, because that is the total amount of our structural deficit, and we've got to cover that. And I understand, uh, I, I, I paid attention to the gentleman who spoke to in public comments, and I understand what he's saying, and I understand the logic of saying, well, you can't support a family by borrowing money and borrowing money. Well, you can if you've got the income to pay the debt. And the point, that's the point of borrowing. The, the, the point of borrowing is financing over a longer term with money you do have, which is actually less money than paying for $4 million worth of road projects at one time, but paying the debt service on that, which is probably around, somewhere around three or $400,000 a year, we do have that much money, and we're spending more, of that, uh, more than that right now on roads. The, the logic of what we're doing is good. The long-term part of it scares the Jesus out of me. Yeah, the total amount that we'd borrow if we followed through with $4 million for 10 years. What I'd like to do is see this thing come back every year with a, and, and have us go through approval and then have us take a look at what, the, what capital improvements we can do in the years to come. I do know, as I said right at the beginning, our baseline dollar amount every year until the wonderful people in Madison decide that we can, uh, that they're going to uh, fund highways at a little better rate our county roads and township roads at a little better rate. Uh, until they decide that, we're going to be stuck with borrowing about 1.8 million a year. But that's still cheaper than what we're doing now. So anyway, uh, I'm, I intend to support this, and uh, I'll be watching carefully in the future to see where we go with this and uh, and uh, trying not to break the bank. Supervisor Condon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the gentleman that spoke, in public comment, I, I very much agree with that because with the seniors, this is going to add the towns. We had a bad winter. The towns, the villages, and the cities are going to have to improve their roads with the winter maintenance. And yesterday, I and District Four Supervisor, which is Ed Wagner, uh, attended a legislative meeting up in Mosinee in which Wisconsin Counties Association staff, Kyle Christensen, Director of Government Affairs. He spoke, on, he spoke on the transportation funding and indicated that the Wisconsin Counties Association was working with the legislators and DOT on trying to get additional funding into the transportation fund other than from gas tax because of what's happening with the gas tax and more efficient cars and things like that. And also he spoke about uh, DOT Secretary Mike Gottner. Uh, and he would help nine town meetings, town hall meetings across the straight state, and it, they begin on April 8th and ended on May 21st. And the closest one that was around here was April 30th, and it was in Wausau talking about this same subject. You had the DOT secretary there where you could. The first one was attended in, uh, in Eau Claire, I believe. And there were 60 people there, and it dwindled down. So there wasn't a lot of support, and I just wonder if anybody from Wood County or if any of the highway department went to it. I'm, I'm not supporting this resolution just because of the extra cost. We got the Space Needs Committee Implementation Program that we're going to have to gonna get money for. I'd like to see a package come, and just how much we're going to spend this year. Also, the referendum coming up on highway aids in November. 
uh, I believe it's a for our second vote on that, whether to make it a constitutional amendment that only highway funds can be used for highway purposes. I'm voting not in favor of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree that we need to maintain the county roads. I think the biggest issue is how we fund it. And I'd like to go back to uh, 1974. Up to that point, all gasoline tax was in a segregated fund spent for roads only. At that time, they changed it that uh, all taxes would go into the general fund. Back then, the gas tax was four cents a gallon. Now it's 3.9 cents a gallon. We all know that the road building costs have gone up. Because the state continues to spend money for purposes other than roads, we will always be short of money. If we are going to convince the state to change the gas tax to a segregated fund, we should not be borrowing money for county roads. It's the main reason for them to change. That's the one lever that we have to convince them to do so, just that. The PECFA fund, which is the Petroleum Environmental Cleanup Fund, was established to fund cleaning up gas stations. Today, these funds are not necessary because all stations are cleaned up and are now privately insured. The PECFA fund is 2.25 cents a gallon, or in other words, $30 million a year. It is not paid out in over 15 years. Today, there is a balance that could be transferred to the transportation fund. In the future, PECFA funds could be uh, relabeled to county road aid. There's another fund known as a Wisconsin um, vehicle transfer fee, $75. $9 of that goes to the DNR for environmental impact studies. In my way of thinking, we don't need impact studies. We need money for road maintenance. The $9 could be labeled a road aid also. That equates to about 13, or anywhere from 15 to 17 million a year. I believe both of these funds could be utilized and change the fund county road aid. Therefore, there would be no need for counties to be borrowing more money and increasing their de uh, tax levy. Also, there would be no need to increase the state gasoline tax. These could uh, be a huge boost to the statewide economy. I know they're talking in Madison about increasing the state gasoline tax, which I don't think they need to do. And there's not a lot of us that are aware in, in November there's going to be a referendum out here asking the public whether or not the state should uh, put the gasoline tax into a segregated funds and then be spent only for roads. That's something new coming up and that's another reason to not do this today. If counties borrow money for roads, then not only does it become a, another tax levy we can't afford, but it doesn't solve our problem. What happens is 10 years from now, we'll be in worse shape because we won't be able to keep up because of the funding source. This cause this problem was caused because the funding did not keep up with the pace of the cost of roads. I've also spoken to a number of constituents and not one of them has suggested we vote yes on this. We can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect different results. Change is essential to survival. Obviously, I'm voting no. Thank you. Additional discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I can I can certainly count heads now, and we're, this this resolution is not going to pass. I can plainly see that. But let, let's look at the resolution itself and about the process that we're, we're looking at. Um, the resolution does say not to exceed 4.8 million. Well, this is just to get us a starting point. We can take that down, and we're not selling the bonds at this point. We're just asking for approval to go up to that amount. Once um, we go through the budget season, we'll know how numbers shake out and what increase, if any, there would be. I mean, there are things like that that'll shake out. Um, this is only a one year, each year, Mr. Wagner's right. You would have to come back to this county board every single year, excuse me, every single year and um, request these, um, this borrowing to continue. So this, this uh, resolution does not tie our hands for 10 years. That was a plan presented last year by the, or last month by the highway department and what they saw would fulfill the needs of the county infrastructure. Um, I, I don't disagree with Mr. Clendenning, Mr. Winch, Mr. Brockman in the back. Um, that bar, this county has been very reluctant, including yours truly, has been very reluctant to start borrowing money. But I just don't see how you cannot leverage those funds when, I mean, yes, we want the PECFA fund, we want the gasoline tax, we want all this stuff. There isn't a snowball's chance in Florida that we're going to get that stuff tomorrow or even how long is it going to take to get that as our roads continue to crumble, which will end up costing us more in the long run. Nobody's giving me, or no, I haven't heard anything that gives me tangible 
alternatives to the road building that they're suggest that what the highway department has suggested. Um, the wait. Well, let's just wait and see. Let's wait and see. We've done that for years, folks, and the roads continue to deteriorate. Um, I'm just. You look on page, I think it's 77, if you guys, and I probably see a bunch of people start sliding. I think it's 77. There's a picture of, uh, we're going to be talking about the farm tech days. And it has pictures from the days gone by um, you know, of what farming equipment was like back then. And a lot of, you know, this is when our roads were really constructed. It was back in the 50s, 60s. I think we saw last year, by 1970, most of our roads had been uh, redone. Um, it's an old Oliver tractor for crying out loud. You know, we just don't have traffic like that anymore. The, the days of just throwing an overlay on the road, you can't do that. It doesn't last with the heavy equipment. The, the needs that this county has for infrastructure has changed dramatically in those years. Infrastructure is the silver bullet, I think. It, it's tangible. I can see it. Um, if we want any sort of economic development, in my mind, it, the transportation is how we can get there. And it's not just in the, and I see the mayor of Marshall was back there, it's not just the economic development in the cities that we're talking about. It's economic development in the rural areas too. I mean, people don't all live in the city of Marshall or the city of Rapids or the city of Pittsville. They live out in the town of Hiles, Dexter, Rock, uh, Arkham, those types of places. It's economic development for them as well. Nobody's been, not many people like building down a gravel road. Most people like blacktop roads and a, a decent road to get stuff there. So those are just my thoughts. But again, this doesn't tie our hands to the 4.8. This is just a starting point to get us through the budget season. And this does not tie our hands for 10 years indefinitely. Every year it would be a new, um, a new thing. Thank you. Any other discussion on this resolution? Supervisor Ashback. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we should have uh, had a road tour before we voted on this resolution, and I could take some of these people out and show them what my people have been working with all these years. They've been patient and they're waiting. And how long are, how long are they supposed to wait until the, until the bumpers go off their cars, or what are we supposed to do with them? Any other discussion on this resolution? I'll get back to you. I will get back to you, Mr. Wilson. Supervisor Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, um, and I appreciate our chairman's role in the big discussion because I think that Supervisor Winch brought up some wonderful points because there really is a big picture here. And I've always been mad when they've taken money out of the state in what is supposed to be our tax dollars that's supposed to support road construction. And um, Mr. Chairman, I, I would appreciate if you would share with this board some of the discussions that you are participating in with the Wisconsin County Association and with the Secretary of the Department of Transportation with the bigger picture. Because the reason that I'm supporting this resolution is because it says up to. You know, it doesn't have that dollar amount where we're going to make sure that there, and there's going to be a lot of wisdom in actually how much we're going to borrow for this. But there is a bigger picture, and I don't want us to lose the fact that we're advocating for road dollars at the state level while we're trying to play some catch up at the county level until some changes are made. So we need to be advocates for making sure that we get some of that dollar when this referendum comes up. We have to be responsible about voting for that. So would you share with us, Mr. Chairman, some of the discussions that are taking place that we can get involved with as county board supervisors to help the state do the right thing? All right, we're... <laughs> I don't know where you want me to go with this, and, and the reason I'm asking is uh, I have had discussions, obviously, but on an issue I'm not supposed to weigh in here unless I turn the gavel over to somebody else, although everybody pretty much has spoken on it. Does anybody care if I just give you an update? Is there, is there an issue with that? If there is, say yeah. <laughs> um, all right, quickly, then I'll get to Supervisor Lynch. Just, just, just an update there, not try to influence anybody. Uh, did have a meeting the other day. Uh, I was in Madison for two and a half hours with the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Mark Gottlieb. Uh, we sat down with the road builders, uh, the transportation people, the villages, cities, towns, municipalities, counties, uh, and a couple of the state senators. We talked about long-term funding for roads, and, and I think you will see uh, in the referendum segregation of that transportation fund. I think that will happen automatically. Uh, to address Supervisor Winch's questions, and I asked that of the Secretary with the PACFA funds and some of the others. Uh, 
Those might be freed up, but it'll be a free-for-all grab for that money by every department in the state, no matter how it was originally designated. If they free those dollars up, everybody's going to look at a grab. But from a state perspective, they're looking at a lot of things. Uh, they are looking at maybe re-indexing the gas tax. That would be one. Number two, although they've said right now uh, it's not on the immediate horizon, open road tolling, uh, when you talk to the villages, municipalities, towns, and some of the others, probably the number one way that would increase those revenues immediately. I just talked about the segregated funds. Sales tax is another one that they're certainly looking at. The ability to allow counties to institute that additional half cent sales tax to increase uh, funds for highway maintenance. Uh, to address Mr. Winch's question, you're right, that's a concern. Um, if we pay for it, do they not pay for it? At the end of the day, they thought they might free up about another $300 million uh, in the next biennium for uh, road maintenance. $300 million divided by 72, you, you can do the math, figure out where that goes. So uh, these discussions are ongoing. We have had the year of, uh, we had several state senators, several representatives, uh, the, the leadership in both of those houses, along with the secretary and the counties discussing this, because there is an immediate need to address these issues. And it was addressed during public comment. It was addressed by every member of this board. Uh, I think the important part that you realize, as Supervisor Miner said, is this is an authorization to do something. But until you look at how it impacts the total tax rate, I believe, as Supervisor Wagner said, uh, the actual dollar amount would vary. But to your question, Supervisor, we're looking at five or six solutions. Everybody who's got skin in the game has been at the table. There were, that meeting went four hours with the secretary there for two and a half. So it's, a, it's an immediate need. It's recognized by all levels of government uh, at the state level, and we will continue to address those needs. We have another meeting scheduled uh, with Todd Berry, the secretary, and some of those coming up the very start of August. So those, uh, those conversations will continue. That's an update. Supervisor Winch. Thank you again. Um, just to talk about that segregated fund, that's been talked about on the state level for a number of years now. My way of looking at it is we're now getting to the home stretch here, and if we pull the one lever that we have by borrowing the money and, and uh, maintaining our roads, when something the state should be funded, you know, if we're weakening our position, and we shouldn't be doing that. We should be carrying this on through. We're, we're coming to the finish line here. Why give up now? Second round, Supervisor Wagner. Uh, as Mr. Glendening uh, mentioned, I was at that legislative briefing yesterday, and just about every legislator who addressed this always talked about the famous, uh, you know, in the immortal words of George W. Bush, make the pie higher. They always said, oh, let's put more, well, we're going to get more money into the fund. I've been in this business over 30 years, and I think I've heard that every year for 30 years. It's never going to happen. And the other point, and to address Mr. Lynch's concern about is giving away a bargaining chip, we just want to count it. There are other counties that are borrowing money that are way, way ahead of us in doing this. Our borrowing or not borrowing is not going to make it come out to a hill of beans in the grand scheme of the things in the state. Supervisor Clendenning? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you think that they'll raise the sales tax by one cent to fund this, you're not going to happen because there's no new taxes in Madison. They call everything a tax. And the, the, the one thing is, is we've got to remember that you know, towns, villages, and cities, the town has most of the roads mileage in the state of Wisconsin owning it, and them all have to be fixed. And they've got to find a way in Madison. It's what we got to do is, <clears throat> in child support, they took our funding away from us in child support. Uh, Brett Berwink, with child support. We went down to Madison on, on several meetings with, with Brett Berwink and at different hearings. And we heard it from legislators, oh, we can't give you that, we can't give you that. We, we talked to a legislator, and we got funding. And I know it was federal, but I can tell you why. That legislator, first of all, we talked to his aide, and then we talked to him. And we got the funding, and there was people saying, it's no way this is going to ever happen. You're not going to get those restored. You are. We have to make our legislators work for what we're trying to do right here, and it should be the state doing it. Additional discussion. Any additional discussion on this resolution? Okay. Please vote.
and that resolution failed to pass. We needed 15 yes votes to pass that resolution. So we will go back to the drawing board, I guess, and see how we're going to have that going on in the future. So uh, that resolution failed. It just took a three-quarter vote to pass this resolution. All right, page, that was page 17. This is page 18 of your packet, uh, second resolution from the executive committee, uh, and this is to accept the offer of sale of tax deed property. I ask the clerk to please read that resolution. This will be resolution 14-6-2 to accept the offer of sale of tax deed and property. Fiscal note, offered amount of $12,000 minus real estate taxes, special charges, publication fees, abstracting fees for a gain of $4,540.61. I have a motion by Supervisor Wagner, a second by Supervisor Clendenning. Any discussion on this issue? Supervisor Ashback. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the bottom line, it says that uh, in the West Avenue, in the Village of Miller, it should be West Street. You got the wrong wording on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. The property is on West Street instead of West Avenue. That's something she certainly clarified. <laughs> yeah. And we can do that within the resolution, I guess. Um, but as long as we've got the um, parcel number, I think we're probably safe to go. Okay. With the parcel number, we're good. That's a more clear identifying yes. process. All right. So we have a motion. We have a second. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? Please vote. That resolution passed unanimously. Page 19 of the packet, another resolution from the Executive Committee uh, dealing with the designating public depositories and authorizing withdrawal of county monies. And I ask the clerk to please read that resolution. This will be resolution 14 dash six dash three to update resolution designating public depositories and authorizing withdrawal of county monies to include number of signatures and titles of authorized persons no fiscal note i have a motion by hamilton a second by hankel that was what you were raising your hand for brad wasn't it okay any discussion on this resolution any discussion supervisor nelson uh, the one thing going through this list here, uh, I see some banks that have been uh, uh, bypassed, and then I see we have Bancroft State Bank, which is not in Wood County. I think we should stay in Wood County with our funds. Supervisor Clendenning. Town of Saratoga. Yes. Any other discussion? Any other discussion or solution? I don't know where that is. Please vote. Resolution passed unanimously. Page 21 in your packet. Health and Human Services Committee of June 2nd. Page 21. Any questions? Or 22. Page 23. Community Care of Central Wisconsin. That means of April 23rd. As well as 24, 25, 26. Supervisor Rosa, do you have anything? Yeah, I do. I just. Um... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to point out that um, uh, our department head, Sue Comferman, uh, put the Wood County Health Department annual report on your table. So um, we're very proud of our health department. They do just wonderful things locally, statewide, and nationally. So reading through this, I think, will help to highlight the programs of the health department. And as always, if you have any questions, Sue Comferman's uh, glad to answer them for you. Thank you. That's page 27, the start of the House Department report, June 2nd, 27, 28, 29, 28, and 30. We have Director Retter's report from Human Services on pages 31 through 37. I'll give you a minute to go through those and see if you made any notes. 31 through 37. <coughs> Questions there? Veteran Service 
officer's report on 38 and 39. Amy Slattery's report from Edgewater Haven on 40. Page 41 is the Wood County Public Safety Committee of May 12th, as well as 42, 43, 4, 5. Page 46 is the Humane Officers Report. Page 47, Wood County Coroner Gary Cronsay's report, that's 47. Pages 48 through 52, various jail reports. Any questions on any of those? And that will bring us to page 53 in the packets, and that is a resolution from the Public Safety Committee. This will be resolution 14-6-4 to increase the call-out pay and certain charges in the coroner's department to maintain qualified staff utilizing increased user fees to do so. Fiscal note, no anticipated increase in the tax levy as the increased call-out pay for the coroner and deputy coroners should be covered by the increasing fees. Okay, for the reading of the resolution, do we have a motion to approve? By Bry, second by Mahan. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Supervisor Clendenning. Just one more chance to get tax money out of you before you go for the last ride. I'm voting no. Supervisor Nelson. Well, I also am voting no on this for the very simple reason is there was no charge for a signature on a death certificate. We go from no charge to $100. That's outrageous. You know, we can't afford to die, and you don't want us around uh, too long. So I, I think that, uh, and then speaking to a person from the uh, funeral home, uh, he stated that the uh, death document now is computerized, and there is no signature. So why, are we, you know, you're putting in a charge of $100, and you're pulling a wool over her eyes because it's not a fact that it's uh, being done. So, with that said, unless, unless there's an explanation that justifies it, I'll vote no. Supervisor Miner, I guess I would like to hear from the committee members. If there are counties out there that are doing this, are they charging this uh, death certificate fee? Um, and are we in line with the fees that they, other counties charge in these same instances that they're giving here? And I haven't seen that in the minutes. Supervisor Hamilton. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if this is working or not, but I got a pretty good voice. So, what what we looked at is uh, when he brought the fees before us and brought the charges, uh, we were way lower than everybody else. If I'm saying it wrong, you correct me. We are actually lower than most of the counties around us, and both fees and on and on charges that we do. What we did was kind of bring it up so where we can afford to pay these people a little bit more for what they're doing, going out at two o'clock in the morning, then going back out at four o'clock in the morning, and then going to their regular jobs, etc. And this way it covers this cost that we're incurring with it, or these charges that we're incurring covers the cost that we're trying to get. We're not trying to make any money at this. This is not any intention whatsoever. We're trying to just cover what we're doing. And with, the, with what we've got set up, that's, that's what we feel that, uh, that's how we feel it's gonna work out, so. Thank you. I had a question, I, I believe the question came from Supervisor Nelson, I'm not sure. I do have the corner here. Does anybody want additional information from the corner at this time? I do have Gary Cronset here. Is there any additional information anybody would like from the corner? Because if there is, we can ask that question directly. Supervisor Nelson? To verify the fact that if it's computerized, why is it being charged with no signature? Gary, can I get you, with the body's indulgence, I'd like to bring the corner and the microphone. Gary, can you give the microphone and answer those questions, please? Come on, up there. That one right there would be fine. Thank, thank you all. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that I've appreciated working for the county for the last 22 years. And at the end of December this year, it will be uh, my retirement date. And in order to get some, continue to have the fine service that we've had, we've got some of the best deputy corners in the state of Wisconsin, believe you me. And I, I think if some of you think that all we do is go to 
sign a death certificate and that you ought to go along with the coroner for once. And uh, you sure find out a different story. I used to think that many years ago too, but uh, it's not that way. Mr. Hamilton hit the nail right on the head. We had a, as many as seven calls in two hours here about a month ago up in Marshfield. And uh, imagine if, if I didn't have good deputies running up and back, back and forth from uh, almost uh, Adams County to Marshfield. Uh, that's all I would have time to do. I wouldn't have time to eat or sleep or anything. However, I want to thank you all. And uh, just so you know, I, I do, uh, in order to keep uh, good deputy corners, uh, th this is a, a vital necessity. As you notice, it's not a, uh, a raise for, for the corner himself. Uh, and even if it was, I, I would not uh, qualify for it because the raise won't would take place until after the first of the year. I don't know who's running for corner, but uh, it's, it's not just a simple job. And things are changing. The, pay, the paperwork uh, is insurmountable, it, it, and it's getting worse. But we, uh, I would like to see uh, see my deputy corner uh, get this raise they're entitled to, and in order to keep uh, good quality corners. And yes, we are way low compared to most of the counties. Portage County is, is lower than us, but most of the counties in the state of Wisconsin, some of them are up to $200. And here we just got done talking about roads and roads and, and we, you know, we should be paying for these things. Yes, we have to pay for services. That's the way, that's the fact of life. And so we may not like it, but that's the way it is. And uh, uh, things aren't going to get any better. And, and if you want to keep, get qualified people who want to spend, who are dedicated, dedicated people who will get up, you know, any hour of the day or night, go to these hor horrific accidents, then you got to pay them. And if you don't, you, you're going to, you're, you're not going to get qualified people because uh, most people don't go into this job just for dedica dedication. They do want to make some money. Although my deputies, uh, like I said, are the finest in the state. If you don't know who they are, uh, especially the people from Marshfield, you should get to know them because they're, uh, they're the finest in the state. Jerry, can I? Thank you. Just like we're still in the background. Jerry, will you restate the question that you had before on the left hand side of the question? I don't have to answer that. I didn't it, was, understand. it was a simple question, and the question is. If the death certificates are being computerized with no signature, why are you putting a hundred dollar charge when there would be no uh, revenue that would be derived from it? Mr. Nelson, I'm sorry, I did hear it. Could you turn around and look? Well, I think the question here. was, if the death certificates are not computerized, why are you charging a hundred dollar fee? I think that that okay. sums it up. All right, we. Sh I, that was my mistake. I should have started charge, uh, requested a char charge year, a few years back, as most counties are, and most of them were up to a hundred dollars five or six years ago. I the reason I'm, I'm and computer I, uh, you know, computerization is harder than it was before. Before we manually signed it. Now that oh, with all the problems, as you can see, Obamacare with his computer problems. Well, sometimes we have have problems with the state, and uh, the last three death certificates I had to sign, I had to go and get some of the state had to come in and in my computer. So it's not all all that easy, you know. Just because it's computerized, as the time the time element in the uh, doesn't change anything. If Mr. Nelson, I'm not sure if, if I'm answering your question, but I can't. If you turn around and ask it so I could hear you, I could try to answer. I am hard of hearing. Uh, Jerry, did I sum up the question okay? I think we got it good. Thank you very much. All right, is there any Thank you. I have a Supervisor Rosa. I just have a question. None of the fees that we charge for the coroner's service are recouped by charging the estate of the deceased. Is that true? 
I don't know what the uh, what the funeral homes do. They whether they eat it or they charge it. Uh, we get the fee from the funeral homes, unless it would uh, a family would uh, bury the person. Uh, then they would have to uh, pay pay me directly. But all all the checks come from the funeral homes, and uh, they come to me every month. And then I turn them into the to the county here. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? All right, please vote. Thank you. Thanks, That resolution passed 11 to 6. 11 to 6. Takes me to page 54 in your packet, uh, minutes of the seed committee of Tuesday, May 20th. Page 55 in your packet, their meeting of Wednesday, June 4th, as well as 56, 57, 58, and 59. On page 60, we have the North Central Impact Board of Thursday, March 27th, and that's on 60. 61, their Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Report on 62, 63, and 64. Reports from UW Extension, from Peter Manley and other people in that department, pages 65 to 80. Pages 65 to 80, I'll give you a minute to go through those. So if you had any questions on those letters of comment. Chairman, 73 was a picture of the tractors, by the way, not 77. <laughs> <laughs> not that that's going to change your vote at all. He lives in a rural area. You think he'd know what a tractor looks like. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're to page 81 in your packet. Uh, that's a monthly report from Jerry Stork in the Land Conservation Department. That's 81. 82. We have... Jason Grunenberg's report from Planning and Zoning, the Planning and Zoning Director, begins on page 83 and runs to 92. Page 83 to 92, their monthly report and letter of comments. Any questions on any of that? I'll give you a minute to go through those. Any questions on any of those? All right, that takes us to page 93 in the packet, and this is a resolution from the seed committee. This will be resolution 14-6-5, support and authorization for Wood County to host 2018 Farm Technology Days. Wisconsin Farm Technology Days, formerly called Wisconsin Farm Progress Days, is a jointly supported and planned effort by Wisconsin Farm Technology Days, Inc., and a host county's University of Wisconsin Extension office. One of the selection criteria used to select a host county is the support of the Board of Supervisors. The, re the resolution expresses the Wood County Board's support to host this event in 2018. Fiscal note, Farm Technology Inc. and UW Extension requires funding of up to $63,000 from 2015 through 2018 to be used as follows. 2015 startup capital of $20,000. 2015 through 2018, funding for additional support services of $13,000, and 2017 through 2018, hire and utilize marketing assets of $30,000. I have a motion by Supervisor Clendenning and a second by Supervisor Nelson. Is there a discussion on this resolution? Supervisor Mahan. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I just have one question. I see the 63000 upfront startup money uh, that we're going to uh, give them and then I read further down the resolution that it is expected we will recoup that I'd just like to know someone that has maybe some experience with this is that a is that a pretty for sure or yeah um, maybe we just hosted one year who do I have in the back that might want to answer this yeah. 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 come on <laughs> yeah we had a long discussion about this I think we can answer something so uh, the major sources of funding for this event would be uh, uh, there will be a person that will uh, uh, 
solicit sponsors. Uh, there's the sale of the uh, commercial exhibits. And then there's the people that walk in through the gate. And uh, even if the event should be rained out, if we are uh, as successful as other uh, Farm Technology Days events, uh, there would be uh, enough money to uh, recover all these costs. And uh, we do expect uh, with 60,000 people coming to the county and uh, all the activity that there'd be a lot of benefit uh, to the county gained out of that. Um, so normally the counties can, but are not required. Uh, uh, some, some counties have decided this is their investment and they have not asked for the money back, but we didn't write it that way. Um, it's written that uh, uh, at this point that we're asking for this money now and that it could be returned if, if that is your pleasure. So right away. And this is, can I stay right at the microphone? Yeah, I, I do have a question for you. What is it uh, but, um, is, Do we know who the host family or host firm is going to be? Uh, that, that's not the sequence of events, and, and I did want to have a chance to uh, explain that. So uh, you get a county board to uh, approve this background funding, and uh, this organization meets once a year in April, and we would submit our uh, application at that time. Likely would be the only one applying. Um, and then after that, the next one of the first steps would be soliciting host farms. So uh, people are, have already heard about this. Uh, people are asking, uh, but we would not do a formal recruitment until uh, probably the fall of next year. I, I, I just want to add that in, in, in some of the response to the, the question that was asked. So, uh, I, I worked for a farm equipment company for a lot of years, and one of my jobs was to run the show at Farm Progress or Farm Technology. Um, the one that sticks out in my mind was the one in Marathon County in about, I think that was in 01, uh, 2000 or 2001. They set a record for attendance at that show. They had uh, the total gate receipts for the show were over 350,000, or 350,000 people for the show. It was probably the best. It was the best show that had ever been done, and the sponsors made tons of money off of that show. So, uh, I the, the the funds are there and they can be recovered. So we're ready to come back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was involved in Wilshire County's uh, Farm Progress days back when the Dead Sea was sick, of course. Way back then. Hey, is this the first one for Wood County? 1960. Oh, 1960. It's been a long time. We had it in 1960 at the uh, University of Wisconsin Marshfield Ag Research Station. Yeah, you know, I, I, and it brings in a lot of money. It's great. I mean, we had great weather and everything. And you can volunteer for the Portage County one this year. They're signing up volunteers so you can learn firsthand. There you go. Are, there, are there any other questions on the resolution? Any other questions? Right, thank you very much. All right, with no questions, please vote. That resolution passed 17 0. Thank you. Uh, page 94 in your packet, minutes of the Judicial and Legislative Committee of May 21st, as well as page 95. Page 96, the Joint Legislative Committee of March 17th, as well as page 97, 8, and 9. Court Counsel's report on page 100 and 101. Child Support Agency's letter from Brett Bruin on 102. Any questions on any of those minutes? Supervisor Clendenin. I just like to let people know that we're not having our meeting tomorrow at the usual time at 1 o'clock. We're having it on the 23rd, Monday the 23rd at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Page 103 in your packet, minutes of the Highway Infrastructure and Recreation Committee. That's 103. 04. 5. 6. Supervisor Winch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, item number 17. That motion is incorrect. Uh, I voted no on that issue. I'd like to have that change, please. That's at the committee meeting. We'll make sure the committee does that at the next committee meeting. Okay. That's page 106 for those who are looking at that item number 17. Okay. So noted, Bill. Page 
106, item 17. 107, we'll, we'll make the change. Page 107. Page 108, Minutes of the Wood County Wildlife Advisory Committee of April 8th. Some asphalt figures on 109. ADRC minutes on 110, from April 10th, as well as 111. 112. Additional minutes from the Finance Committee on 113. Note that our uh, Supervisor Fire sits on that committee and now Supervisor Mahan. So if any of you have any questions on that, the Regional Consortium directed that direction. Uh, the Central Wisconsin State Fair Board Minutes on 114, 115, and 16. Uh, Central Wisconsin State Fair Board Minutes of May 19th on 117, 118, and 119. The Macmillan Memorial Library Board of Trustees of April 16th at 120, 121. South Central Library System, 122, 123. The University Commission meeting, of January 16th at 124. We have the resolution uh, that dealt with on page 125, the long-term service. Um, we obviously did those recognitions. I would, so let's do this by motion and voice vote. Uh, motion by Hamilton, second by Wagner. All in favor of that resolution, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> and that carries unanimously. Uh, the last page in the packet is page 126. Uh, and this is related to the life and service of Joe Rubel. And if the clerk would read that, uh, Joe served at the same time Chairman Wrangell did, uh, for the most part. I served with him for quite a few years, if you please read. This will be Resolution 14-6-7, and it's relating to the life and public service of Joseph K. Rubel. Okay. Motion by Roser, second by Hamilton. All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. And then I would ask this board to please rise in a moment of silence and respect uh, for the passing of Joe Rubel. us to the end of the packet. Is there anything else that needs to come before the board? We'll, we'll go through the Supervisor Roser. Um, I just want to make sure that this board knows that we're having um, our last meeting with Venture Architects with our Space Needs Implementation Ad Hoc meeting on June the 26th at 10 o'clock in room 115. And I would invite any supervisor to come. Uh, there will obviously be a presentation to this board uh, with recommendations from that ad hoc committee. But it's really important that we hear what people have to say about some of the recommendations that are coming. So I would like to invite any supervisor to that meeting, please. And uh, let's try to get the information out there so that we uh, are educated when we start talking about recommendations. Um, the IT staff wonders if you would uh, hang around just for a couple of minutes to talk about uh, further training, uh, ask you a couple of questions about your iPads, just get a little bit of feedback. So after the board meeting, you can just hang around for a minute or so. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to point out that we have a couple of guests in the back of the room. The Dean for University of Wisconsin Marshall Wood County is here, Dr. Storer, and uh, Shelly Bornke, the Assistant Dean for something, something, something that we deal with with budget time. So I don't know her title, and I apologize, Shelly, I really do, but uh, they are in the back of the room as well. And, and Trent mentioned for as, long, as well as the Mayor from oh, Marshfield. I must <laughs> and Chris, I didn't see him back there before. You were behind a couple of big guys from the Sheriff's Department. So I, he said you were here before. I was looking around going, I just don't see him back there. Thank you for your attendance today. So uh, next meeting, July 15th, is there anything else that needs to come before the board? I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Hankel, second by Hamilton. All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.